Is there a balance to be struck between worldly pursuits and letting go for a layman? Should any kind of ambitions, career goals, preferred professions be allowed? If any desire is considered false, what of the desire for nirvana? There's another question on the moderator site, um, our, our Google moderator site. Um, that says it's, it's even better than this one. It's uh, kind of a unique formulation. Although I've heard the question many years ago, the question is: um, I've started to practice something like I've started to practice meditation, and I can feel myself losing my sexual desire, uh, and I'm afraid that I'm not going to be able to to perform. Uh, I, I'm afraid if I lose my lust, I won't be I won't be able to be with my wife anymore. And um, you know what? How can I how can I balance my practice, but still, um, you know, how can I basically how can I not accidentally? Um, how can I be sure I'm not going to accidentally lose something that's precious to me? It's important to me. Um, it's not not the same question as this one, but it's along the same lines. But but it, it 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 you know you're talking about two opposite things, in one sense, and um, so so I guess this is where the concern arises because clearly you, any even superficial reading of the Buddha's teaching shows us that um, Buddhism doesn't consider Buddhism considers any craving any clinging any ambition whatsoever, any desire, basically, to be unwholesome. Uh, depending what you mean on the word desire, and we get into big arguments about this. I got into an argument some time back with people who tried to say that desire can be, can be beneficial. So it's a matter of semantics, what exactly you mean by the word desire. But worldly pursuits, definitely, is, is quite, there, there's quite a clear implication in the Buddhist teaching that worldly pursuits are um, antithetical to the um, to progress towards enlightenment. So how do you strike a balance? I, it's, um, it's, kind of, it's like striking a balance between drinking alcohol and sobriety um, you know there's they're, they're opposites it's one or the other if you want to do them both then it's a tug of war you're being pulled in both directions and you have to understand that that's the first part of the answer the second part is to understand that it doesn't in 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 reality it doesn't work that way there isn't a choice being made like, um, I'm going to practice this much, or, or I'm going to hold on to these things, I'm going to let go of those. Um, so you could accidentally make the wrong choice, and whoops, you've let go of something, and that's a real shame because you still like it. It can't happen because as long as you don't... Because what people don't realize is how profound and complete... Um, insight into reality is. It really is insight. It really is understanding. It's not a book. We think of it like our only example, only comparison is book learning. And so we think it's something like you look up in a book and you get it. You say, oh yeah, I agree with with um, you know, Socrates or Kant or, or Schopenhauer. I agree with these guys. And therefore... Um, I, I know it, you know, that, that's my understanding. I understand this theory of reality or this philosophy. It's not like that. The understanding that you gain from meditation is real understanding of the truth. So it's not something to worry about. It's only going to come if it really and truly is 100% for, for benefit, for good, for... for uh, it is only 100% a positive thing. So this fear of, this irrational fear people have of nirvana, you know, you hear about nirvana, you think, whoa, that sounds scary. I mean, leaving the world behind, that's, that sounds like, I have to be careful I don't fall into that, right? Nirvana is based on a, a 
perfect realization of the truth. That's all you have to know. If, if, if you can meet anyone who says they want to delude themselves, or, or if you ask some, someone whether they want to delude themselves into thinking that that which is unpleasant, or that which is unpleasant is actually pleasant, um, no, one, no one in their right mind, I think, would, would answer yes. That's something that is hurting you. Um, would you rather carry the belief that it is causing you, bringing you happiness? Or would you like to know that it's hurting you when it is in fact hurting you? That's that's really the question we have to be asking because the truth that you're going to see is that those things which you think are bringing you pleasure, bringing you happiness, are actually hurting you, are actually a cause f without question, without doubt, without any qualifier, are bringing you unqualified uh, suffering. That um, that is what we mean here. So, the the, the there was the, the where I heard this question was uh, I heard it in Thai. This Lumpo Chodo, this monk in Bangkok, one of the big vipassana meditation teachers, about fifty, well, thirty, forty years ago. Um, he had a Western person. I think it was a Western person come up to him and say to him, you know, I'm 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 really afraid. I feel myself letting go, and I'm and I really love my girlfriend. So I'm I'm. Uh, I'm afraid that I'm going to let go of something and, and I don't want to let go of my my love for her. And it's not some, it's something you have... The point, his answer was, you know, don't worry about it. There's lots of defilements left for... You, you don't have to worry about them all getting... disappearing. And his point was that um, it's really not that easy. You don't just... You don't just one day wake up and have no... Or one day come out of a meditation session and suddenly, whoops, you've you've uh, got no more desires left. It's really a painful, arduous process of, of realization that forces you to rethink um, or, or, or see things in a new way. Re well, see things in a new way, see things differently. Uh, so definitely not, not something you have to worry about. Now, um, it's actually not not exactly what you're. It's not answering everything that you're asking here. So let's let's be more concise and to the point, based on what we've just talked about. So the balance I've talked about. It's not really a balance. It's a tug of war. That's you have to understand. But that being said, I think the, the so the concise answer is to continue what you're doing, and until you understand, or have some reason to believe that these things are causing you suffering, then don't worry so much about them. Focus more on um, self-investigation, or, or investigation of reality, than on condemning or, or denouncing certain activities. So all in due time. Once you see that those activities are causing you suffering, then it is proper to uh, abandon them. To abandon them first works in 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 certain instances, um, but in the deeper ones it will not. In in the long run, it'll come and hit you. It'll 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 get what do you call it? It'll it'll come back to you because you're ignoring or you're 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 uh, smoothing over the fact, overlooking the. the the fact that you don't really uh, see those things as harmful. So if you just say, I'm going to give up all sensuality, uh, and so and, and so you just you just stop it and try to live your life like that, unless you're unless you truly w without really truly understanding that it's wrong for you. This is um, the wrong way to go about things. Uh, you might want to, what you should do is put everything aside, put aside your worldly pursuits, and investigate them. You can't just put them aside and try to live your life without the proper investigation. That's what I'm saying. So, um, that this is why the Buddha allowed all these things, because he encouraged people to, uh, lay people anyway, into self-exploration. Now, if you want to take up um, 
the sort of self-exploration that would allow you to give these things up, then you give them all up, but at the same time practice the type of intense meditation, intensive meditation, that will allow you to see that they're wrong. Simply, for example, becoming a monk and not practicing meditation, but, but giving up all sensuality and uh, living your life as a perfect example of Buddhist morality, no worldly pursuits, no sensual indulgences, um, etc., etc. So maybe you can go, you can live in a cave, not speak, just seclude yourself from reality, but without actually investigating the problem to give up the attachment, will will in the end do nothing for you, and, and will come back and bite you in the butt, and you'll find that um, you go back into society. Whenever you go back into society the desires and the aversions are still in, they're in full force. Um, and so this is why you find, as we were talking about before, you'll find many monastics who actually aren't able to give up sensuality. They find themselves um, in, indulging in it and, and you know, having big widescreen televisions and so on, and listening to music, etc. Because, because they they are living the life, but not. They're they're walking the walk. No, I don't know. They're the external form is good, but their minds are not actually um, at this at the point where they can give the thing, give the give up the desires and the attachments. So that's the sec. That sh sort of um, addresses the second question. Is not worry too much about your ambitions, except to. Ask yourself the question that a Buddhist should, are you sure that they're actually a benefit to you? And once you have some sense that they're not, to the extent that you have a sense that they're not beneficial to you, to that extent you should give them up. But not, not to just believe the Buddha while um, blindly and say, okay, well I'm going to give that up, not because I have any sense whatsoever that it's wrong for me, but because my teacher said that I should. That's not really helpful. Um, not in the long term. In the short term, can be helpful if you're going to. Uh, in the short term, it, it works. But unless you then apply meditation that allows you to see it for yourself, in the end, it's going to come right back and and maybe even be stronger because you've just been repressing it. Okay. Final question: um, Desire for nirvana which again comes down to semantics. I would say desire for nirvana could be a very bad thing um, because it's escapism. Uh, not, not a very bad thing, but it could be uh, a problem um, because it's, it points to a desire to, to run away from things, desire to, for something not to be, which is some kind of partiality. Um, you don't need desire to meditate. Meditation is about understanding reality. In, in, the, in the beginning, it can be useful, you see. Um, because Just like, like any of these things, you, you um, come to meditate and you, you have so very passionate about meditation, so that leads you to meditate. But eventually you realize that that passion itself is getting in the way. So in the beginning, it can be a good thing because it leads you to, only because it leads you to the meditation center and so on, but it leads you for the wrong reasons, with the wrong understanding, a desire to run away. Eventually you realize, oh, you can't really, that doesn't really work, and your whole reason for coming to the meditation center, ironically, is, is a, a bad reason, or it's an unwholesome thing. You will see that, and you'll see that you have to give that up as well, and uh, to the point that you have no desires whatsoever. You're just able to see things clearly as they are. Um, really, it's all about slowly, slowly giving up all desires. Once you have no desires, then you're happy, then you're satisfied. And but again, it's semantic because you could say you could talk about um, a certain type of desire, just meaning referring to intention or or the decision to do something that an arahant still seems to have but it's a functional decision if there if there were any for any reason any reason for it not to uh, them not not being able to follow through with their de desires um, they wouldn't have any 
feeling either way. It would just be a real another realization that they can't um, that they have to change their decision, make a do new decision. So it's not really desire. All desire is, I would say, 